Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dalton from Hammond Chiropractic and in today's video I want to talk about one of my favorite topics and that's stress. Now if you've watched any of my videos in the past you know that I talk about this quite a bit. Truly I believe that stress is one of the largest causes of most um, health problems today and a lot of doctors would agree with me on that same level. And even though I've talked about this in the past, today's video is strictly going to be speaking about stress and I'm going to go into a lot more detail than what you've ever heard me talk about in the past, alright? Now to begin this conversation conversation though, I have to start by asking you a question. And the question is this, do you believe that the human body is designed to be healthy? Now I gave this talk at a seminar with a group of doctors a couple months ago and when I asked that question everybody raised their, raises their hand and says yes I believe the, the body is designed to be healthy. And I'm sure you're sitting there thinking the exact same thing as I'm saying this. But the truth of the matter is that that's actually not the case. The human body is not designed to be healthy but it's also not designed to be sick. The human body is designed to survive. And I want to tell you a little story just to demonstrate that fact so that you understand what I'm talking about here. Let's say, for example, that as I'm standing here, a bear walks into the room. Now, I'm going to see that bear, and my brain is going to go into its little filing cabinets that are stored up there, and it's going to say, what do I know about bears? And it's going to find things, and it's going to tell me things like, well, the bear is really big. They've been known to kill people occasionally. This one has really big teeth, and it's salivating, so it's probably hungry, and it's looking right at me, so I'm pretty sure it's thinking that I'm its next meal, all right? <laughs> Now in that instant, my brain recognizes that there's a threat to my survival. And it's going to turn on a very special part of my nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system. Now we don't have to worry about that word, but what I want to explain to you is that the sole purpose of that part of my nervous system is to prepare my body to either fight the bear or to run away from the bear. So for example, it's going to make some changes inside of me. It's going to raise my heart rate because I've got to pump more blood out to my muscles in order to bring oxygen and nutrients out to those structures so that I can either fight the bear or run from the bear. My blood pressure is going to go up. I'm going to start breathing more deeply to get more oxygen into my bloodstream. And these are good things, right? But at the same time, certain things have to be shut down within my system in order to preserve energy. So for example, digestion completely stops. Because what does it matter if I digest my food if I don't survive this bear right now? Okay, does that make sense? Healing is going to completely stop. Cleansing, things like my liver, my spleen, my kidneys, all these things are cleansing organs. They clean out toxins, they build up my body and kick them out. But that system is going to be completely shut down as well because it's not necessary right now if I don't survive the bear. So now all these changes have taken place within my body and now I either fight the bear or I'm going to run from there. Now let's be honest, <laughs> I'm probably going to run away. I would be as scared to death of that bear. So I'm going to run for today's example. Now I get away from the bear and at this moment my brain is supposed to recognize that the bear is no longer a threat, that it's gone now. I've run away from it and I've survived. So what it's going to do now is it's going to turn on another part of my nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. And what that does is it balances out the sympathetic. So when the parasympathetic turns on, it calms my sympathetic nervous system down. And now everything is going to go back to normal. So my heart rate is going to calm down. My blood pressure is going to come down to normal. I'm going to start breathing more normally and I'm going to start digesting, healing and cleansing again at that point. All right. Now, here's the truth. The truth is, if I want to experience health, then I need my body to stay in that condition for as much time as I can possibly get it to happen. When you're in that parasympathetic mode where the body is working the way it's supposed to, then a person experiences health. But if you're not in that mode, well then we have a problem. All right. Now, this system is awesome and it serves its purpose of preparing you to survive the bears in your life. However, there's a couple flaws to this system. The first flaw is this. My brain doesn't recognize the difference between an actual bear and any other stress in my life. You know, if I have a stressful day at work, my sympathetic nervous system is going to get turned on. If I'm stuck in traffic in my car driving, same thing is going to happen here. If I have a fight with a family member, same thing. My body's going to react exactly identically whether it's one of those stresses in our lives or whether it's an actual bear. Now the other flaw with this situation is this. Your brain is very smart and here's what happens. 
most of us don't experience just one bear occasionally, and that's really what the, the system is designed to deal with. You know, if you had one bear in your life once a month, that would be okay, but that's not how we live our lives in today's uh, society. You know, we have bear after bear after bear after bear all day long, and eventually the brain gets smart and it says, you know what? Every time that I have to keep turning on my sympathetic nervous system, then turning on my parasympathetic, and going back and forth between these two systems to prepare me to fight these bears, I'm spending a whole lot of energy here. So why don't I just stay stuck on sympathetic mode, so that way the next time a bear comes into my life, I'm already prepared for it, and I don't have to spend any extra energy to do so. Well, that sounds great, right? However, think about it. If I'm stuck in sympathetic mode, my body isn't healing. My body isn't cleansing. It's not digesting. It's not doing all the things that it needs to do in order for me to experience good health in my life, okay? Now, at that moment, when the nervous system gets stuck on sympathetic mode, that is when something called subluxation develops, all right? Now, let me explain what a subluxation is, and then I'm going to tell you exactly why I believe that's the case. Subluxation is what chiropractors look for. Now, we have to understand how the nervous system works first, okay? So your nervous system, it's composed of three different parts. You have your brain, which lives inside of the skull. The skull protects the brain. And then off of there comes the spinal cord, and that lives inside of your spine. And then off of the spinal cord, we have the spinal nerves, which travel out to all the different parts of the body. And essentially, the way that I look at the nervous system is that it's the power source of the body, okay? So essentially, this works just like in your house. You have a source of power, which is the power lines outside of your house, and that would be your brain, okay? So it all starts there. From there, the power comes into your house and enters into your breaker box. That would be just like your spinal cord and your spine. And then from the breaker box, all the individual electrical wires travel out to the different parts of your house and they take the electricity to your lights and your appliances and your TVs and all these different things. And that's how everything runs on electricity in your house. Well, those wires are just like the nerves and all the different lights and the appliances and all those things that I mentioned, those would be like all the different organs and body parts because basically your nervous system is running the show. Everything works inside of me because the nervous system controls it and provides power for it to happen. Now, because your spine is surrounded by, or because your spinal cord is surrounded by bone, uh, something can happen here where the vertebrae will misalign. And I want to show that to you, and then I'm going to kind of give you an example of how this really works. So this is just a model of two of the vertebrae in your spine. So we've got a full spine right here. If it were inside of here, it would look like this, and I'm just going to pull it out, and we're going to look at it a little bit more closely, okay? So you've got the bones stacked on top of each other, there's a disc, which is like a cushion between every set of two bones. And then right here at the back, you'll see that there's an opening created between the two bones, and that's where the nerve comes out and it exits to the spine, ex exits from the spine, and goes out and tells the body what to do, basically, and provides power for everything to work. Now, something can happen here where these bones can actually misalign. And do you see how if it misaligns, it's going to put pressure directly onto that nerve? Well, what this essentially does is it cuts off the power from the brain to the body. Now, if we go back to our analogy about your house, well, what happens if the breaker switch cuts off, okay? If a breaker switch gets overwhelmed because you have too many things turned on in one part of the house, it's going to cut off, right? So what does it do? It shuts the power off, correct? Now, let me ask you a question here. So, if the breaker switch turns off, is the logical solution to go and change the light bulbs that aren't working now? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> the solution to the problem is you have to go to the breaker box, you've got to find the switch that turned off, and you've got to flip the switch back on. So, what chiropractors do is we look for these misalignments in the spine, which is essentially like the breaker switch cutting off. We do something called an adjustment, which is where we realign that vertebra. It takes the pressure off the nerve, and now the power turns back on. So it's just like us flipping the breaker switch back on, okay? Now, let's go back to our talk about stress here, now that you know what a subluxation is. Because a subluxation is just that misalignment that I just showed you, and the correction for that chiropractors do is called an adjustment, okay? But with stress, remember we were saying that the body gets stuck on sympathetic mode? Well, what's actually happening there is that your body is creating a subluxation in your spine, and that's what's causing the sympathetic nervous system to stay stuck on. 
Now, how do I know that? How do I know that this is the truth? Well, because of the research. Now, I'm going to be putting these up on the screen for you as I talk about them, but I want to go over three um, research studies that I've discovered that makes me believe what I'm telling you today. The first one is from a man named Dr. Kaur. Now, Dr. Kaur was a physiologist, and in this article, what it was was he was actually giving a lecture to a group of osteopaths, and he was talking about his research into a problem called spinal lesions. Now, a spinal lesion in the osteopathic world is essentially the same thing as a subluxation in the chiropractic world, all right? So it's the same problem. But what he was explaining in this lecture was that when you have a subluxation, and it doesn't matter where it exists in your spine, it could be in your neck, it could be in between your shoulder blades in the thoracic area, it could be in the lower back, it doesn't matter where the misalignment is, but what it does is it causes a chronic overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system, which is basically the story that I just told you, correct? Okay. Now, in addition to that, we know for sure that if the sympathetic nervous system stays turned on for too long, it causes a lot of problems for people. So in this next study that I want to talk to you about, doctors felt him, what they were wanting to know is why is it that when people are under a lot of stress that they tend to get sick more easily? And you've probably experienced this in your life. I know I have before. When I'm under stress, I tend to get a cold or you'll, you'll get a flu or something. Um, and so they wanted to know why is it that that happens to people so regularly? And here's what they discovered. When they looked at the sympathetic nervous system, the nerves that are a part of that system, they actually had connections to all of the organs in my body that produce white blood cells. So these organs would be things like the thymus gland, bone marrow, okay? There's, there's a number of different places where these white blood cells are created and those white blood cells are like the little warriors in your body and they're fighting off infections all the time so that you don't get sick. Well, what they found was that the sympathetic nervous system had connections to these organs and when you were under stress and the sympathetic nervous system was turned on, it would release a hormone called norepinephrine. And what norepinephrine does at these organs is it causes them to stop producing white blood cells. And that's the reason that the person would get sick when they were under a lot of stress because of the sympathetic nervous system causing white blood cells to not be produced within the body at that moment in time. All right. So we know that there's a negative effect. Now, in addition to that, there's one more story that I want to talk to, or one more study I want to talk to you guys about. And this was actually not just one study. This group of doctors, what they did was they were looking into chronic pain, okay, and patients who have chronic pain. And what they were doing was they were wanting to look through all the different research to see what it said about how chiropractic could benefit people who experience chronic pain. And here's what they did. They were talking about how when a person has chronic pain, the brain actually shrinks in size. And the reason it does that is because it's so focused on the pain itself that it can't think about anything else. And so it starts to ignore all of the other functions that are important. So because the brain isn't using these functions, it actually shrinks in size. And they also say that this is the reason that people who experience chronic pain are more likely to have severe neurological problems develop at some point in their life. So things like depression, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, all these things are considered serious conditions. And if you experience chronic pain, you're more likely to develop those things because of the effect that it has on brain function, all right? So what they did was they took a group of these chronic pain patients and they had them go to see a chiropractor for 12 weeks of care, which is three months of care, and they had them see the chiropractor three times a week. And they took images of the person's brain before they started the chiropractic care and then they took images afterwards. And here's what they found, it was fascinating. What they found was that in all cases, all parts of the brain started to function better, okay? And in particular, there was one area of the brain that really showed a marked improvement over all the rest of the parts of the brain. And that area was the frontal cortex. Now, I know you all probably aren't anatomists <laughs> and doctors watching this, so let me just tell you, the main job of the frontal cortex is thinking, okay? It's conscious thought is what happens in the frontal cortex of the brain, and it's actually right here behind the forehead is where it's located at. And what they found was that the patients that went through these the series of chiropractic care over the three-month time period, they had much more um, activity in that part of their brain than they had prior to having chiropractic care. So let me tell you what the summary was and let me explain how this goes back to my bear story that we were talking about. Essentially what was happening there was that when the chiropractor would make the adjustment and correct that subluxation, 
therefore taking the pressure off of the nervous system so that the nervous system could work better. Well, essentially what it was, what it was doing was it was calming the sympathetic nervous system down, okay? And when it calmed the sympathetic nervous system down, it was essentially like sending an update to the brain saying, hey, the bear is gone, it's okay, you can relax now. It put the patient into a parasympathetic mode, which basically would remember is the healthy mode. That's where we want to live our lives if we can. And when it did that, the brain no longer was so focused on the bear, all right, which in their case was the chronic pain. It was no longer fo focusing so much on the bear, so it was able to start performing other functions like it was meant to do. And not only that, but what it was showing was that when these people were receiving chiropractic adjustments on a regular basis, they were able to think better. Now, when I tell you this story, when I tell you about the bear and the sympathetic nervous system and how we want to be in a parasympathetic mode, does it surprise you at all that on a very regular basis, we constantly hear our patients tell us that they are sleeping better, that their brain fog goes away. They tell us that they, um, they don't get sick as often because their immune system is functioning better. Their digestion improves. See, all of these things happen because when we make adjustments to the spine, we're essentially calming the sympathetic nervous system down and now your body goes into a healing mode and it allows your body to function the way that it's supposed to. And that's the whole purpose of a chiropractic. You know, all we're trying to do is we're trying to get your body to work the way that it's supposed to by removing interference to the nervous system and, and therefore by correcting these subluxations, all right? When we do that, the power gets turned on again and the body starts to work the way that it's supposed to. But even more importantly, it's causing a calming down of the stressful part of your nervous system and that allows your body to heal and to function at its op absolute best at all times, okay? So when you're under stress, the very best thing that you can make sure that you're doing is see your chiropractor on a regular basis. I'm telling you, it would change your life. I really have this vision uh, that every man, woman, and child in this world should see a chiropractor at least once a month just to make sure that there's no pressure on their nervous system and that everything is functioning at its absolute best. Because if you do that, you're not only going to have a healthier body, but your entire life is going to happen at a much higher level than what you're used to at this point in time, and therefore your life experience gets better. And that's really what it's all about. That's what we all want anyways, right? We just want to have a better life and we want to be happy, all right? So make chiropractic a regular part of your life and I guarantee you it's going to make a huge difference for you. All right, thank you so much for listening to me today. I hope you found that interesting and useful and we will see you soon on the next video.